The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Ultimate Guard, PTCGL Store, and Atlas TCG. Check out the description below for discount codes and affiliate links to support the squad. Now it's time for the video. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Shuffle Squad channel. I am returning to make a video on the channel here with my good friend Alex Shemansky. Hi everyone, I'm back for the second time ever. <laughs> Well, today we're going to be going over our uh, United Wings list that Alex and I piloted to the North American International Championships last weekend. Uh, everyone was very excited to see Alex playing birds on stream. Uh, and I think there were five of us who played it, right? And three of us day two? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think going into a, a meta where, you know, with... The sort of expected metagame being a lot of Guardi and a lot of Lost Box. A lot of people were really confused why we decided to play Tiny Little Birds. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, Alex can talk a bit more about it, but at least me personally, when I found out we were playing Wings, my read on the meta was sort of that a lot of people needed points. And a lot of those people who needed points uh, were going to stay away from... I would argue Lost Box is probably the hardest deck to pilot well in the format. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, like, even just for me, like, the only deck I've missed points with this entire format has been a comfy deck. Like, Lost Box is risky. Yeah, Lost Box definitely always feels kind of risky going into an event where you really need points, especially when there's such a clear, like, and maybe not just one, a, a breadth of clear alternative options to that deck namely in Gardevoir I think Gardevoir was an incredibly safe deck to play for points to this event specifically um but you also have things like Lugia and Mew that are pretty safe if you're if you're like confident on them they're a lot easier to pilot than something like Gardevoir but yeah we sort of assumed that the vast majority of the percentage of the meta would be those three decks being Gardevoir, Lugia, and Mew um what did we say that the lost box percentage was going to be? I think we were like... Uh, so we estimated 20% uh, because we assumed we could take three losses during the event to top eight. So if we only lost the lost box, then it was safe. Just take 20% losses, fine. Right. And so essentially a 20% loss is one out of five. When you play 15 rounds, that's an equivalent of three. Um, it gets a little wonkier when you like think about ties, but... The gist of it is like we assumed that if we hit three lost boxes, we'd lose to those three lost boxes. And then at the time, we were really convinced that this deck beat everything else. Um, we didn't account for a few things. Alex, do you want to go over some of those things? Yeah, I mean, so the first thing we didn't account for is Urshifu and my run. Um, we also didn't account for Arctura, like seeing the success that it did. Um we knew it would exist, but we assumed, like, the best players, like, Ian played it. We weren't expecting Ian Rob to play the deck. So we assumed, like, we could potentially just outplay the Arc Duras that existed. Um, I don't know if I hit any. Josh hit a few. I hit so much uh, Arceus. He, he beat most of them. Um, I did, But the yeah. other thing we didn't account for is just, like, the deck doesn't necessarily always win the other matchups. Um, like, my other losses were all just, like, double slow starts and just I lost so I only lost the one loss box I don't like we didn't account for the deck just being kind of bad yeah I don't know if bad is the right word like that's not the right word in a in a 15 round tournament I think I bricked like hard bricked a total of maybe five games um no I hard bricked maybe like three games and the other like they just so happened to me with like unfortunate luck like collapse stadium is my bottom card like oh no i lost like things like that yeah and that i think that happened to a couple other people in the group as well where i specifically had a really really bad time where i hit five rcs decks in 13 rounds because i didn't i dropped after round four day two so i didn't even finish i had five rcs decks and my fighting type galade was prized in at least one game Every single time I played against Arceus, um, I still managed to go positive into Arc. I beat three Dura day one. No, that's wrong. I beat two Dura and Atina day one. Um, and then I beat 
No, I lost to both Arctina the second day, one of which was playing double Sharon's Care, which is not something that we accounted for. Uh, and yeah, the, the other one was just some really awkward situations where either I prized... I know game one, I prized my Gallade. I drew it off the prize in one game one, and then both game two and game three, uh, I had awkward situations where I had to squawk my Echoing Horn or mm -hmm. my Gallade or my Clara, uh, and then the other one was prized. <laughs> Uh, which can make things awkward. But yeah, I think I think the deck, what we said was the deck beats everything but Lost Box. But what that actually meant was the deck beats Guardi, Mew, and Lugia. And I think we it sort beats, of... It beats Art Giratina pretty consistently, I think. Um, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Especially, yeah, no Sharon's Care Arctina. I think is definitely favored. Um, I think on paper, it's favored in everything. But that... Paper requires you not to like discard that going horn randomly. Right. So Yeah, and I think I think if the Arc Dura player knows what they're doing. Oh, it's terrible. I, I think it's slightly unfavored. I think it's still like 40-60 them. I would have to play more. Um, but the nice thing about Arc Dura, and I, I played three games into both of my sets against Arc Dura, and uh one of the sets I won because my opponent started Alakazam, attached a DT, and passed. Like, and that's just something that you accept you're going to do when you play a deck like Arctura. And then I think, in terms of consistency with birds, um, for me at least, I double bricked once and I lost to a Guardi, but the Guardi was playing double Cresselia, which we're going to be playing a couple what? games. Yeah, they were playing double Griselia. Uh, and in the entire series, I never did more than 40 damage. Um, <laughs> so it was bad. But what we're going to do uh, once we wrap up here is I'm going to be playing some games from the perspective of some of the top decks right now. And Alex will be piloting birds because it's his deck. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to go over a couple things specifically with the list. I'm sure most of you have seen the list. It was on... Both of our Twitters um, and a few other people have covered the deck, but I was not actually there for the building of the deck. Alex and Alex Kreckler um, were in charge of making the list. So I just have a couple questions for you, Alex. Namely, a lot of people were playing United Wings, uh, but weren't playing the Gallade and were playing a much thinner line of Curlia before this event. What made you decide to to thicken the Curlia line, but then also adding in both Gallades. I mean, so we started with 3-3 three, three, three Curlia, and we just kept it. We never, like, we did consider 2-2 two, two at one point when we tried Trekking Shoes, but, like, 3s were just always worse. So we just kept the Curlia, like, we started there. We never really considered, like, starting below it, so it never really occurred to us. Yeah. Because we just, we spitballed this list. We didn't look at anyone else's. We just went <laughs> with it. Um, Buddy Catch Gallade was always in it because... Like, ultimately, your deck isn't go a zoom, zoom, go fast deck. Like, your deck is, you need to play the game every single turn of the game. Like, Gallade allows you to do that much more consistently. Um, and the Fighting Gallade, uh, Chilling Rain, or whatever it is, it's just a, it exists for Mew and Arceus. Um, especially if they don't know it's coming, you just win the game half the time you play it. Yeah, I think I don't think people realize I haven't seen anyone talking about it. I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about the Gallade for the Arceus matchup. It's so good into Mew. Oh, it's so good in Mew. Like they psychically they go into a Genesec. You can't kill with a bird because you have two birds in your discard and they lost on another one. Like just put up a Gallade. I mean, you can't do it too early because your consistency engine dies when you use it. Right. But like it just takes two prizes instantly when they're not ready for you to take two prizes. Right. Uh, something I also really like with that Gallade specifically is I use it a lot mid game into Mew where they're in a position where their hands are at like sort of an awkward size, but they have to psychic leap. So if they psychic leap and then you kill that Genesect with the Gallade, a lot of times they can't recover their board state to a place where they can like actually set up to do uh, the psychic leap looping that they want to do. Um, because that's really Mew's sort of like game plan into this deck is at least fusion Mew. You sort of yeah. want to set up the, the two Genesect, three Mew, and then a one prizer that you can just psychic leap into um, later in the game so that you take a favorable prize trait. But if you can just sort of like 
limit their bench by going like collapse stadium, they psychic leap, and then you knock out the uh, the Genesect. It puts you in a really, really favorable position to be able to just like steal games off of Mew. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to ask about, a lot of lists before this event were playing like a, a wide variety of stadiums. Um, I believe Collapsed was included in that list, but you were more frequently seeing like Pokestop and Beach Court. So what made you decide to play Double Collapse and no other stadium? I mean, so Pokestop sucks. Um, again, you're not the Zoom Zoom deck. You just, sure, you maybe discard an extra bird at some point in your life. But you don't need to do that. Your deck already does that well enough with Curlia. Um, Pokestop was just a waste of resources. You hit, like, double research or something, your, your game is just gone. Like, you're not coming back. Uh, you hit energies. Like, it's just so bad. Um, Beast Court was considered. We had one in list for a lot of the initial testing. Um, it became a second switch just because it was bad. Like, Beast Court didn't work on Curlia and Gallade, and one of our loss conditions is getting ball stalled. So, like, we just didn't bother. And then we wanted two stadiums just in general. Um, so, Klopp Stadium became the best stadium. Like, you can discard the Squawk ability when you use it after turn one. Um, you can also discard the extra United Wings Pokemon, uh, usually Flamingo, after using Instaflock. Mm -hmm. It's just an extra way to boost damage while also protecting your two riser and slowing down the game. It also screws with Guardi because Guardi hates having a bench limit. Yeah, it's super good into Guardi. Good into Lugia as well. If they are in like an early game position where they can't just bench like Lugia, Lugia, Fish, you can sort of put them in an awkward spot where they either need to find the stadium bump or only put down one, what's the Pokemon called? Archaeops. Um, but yeah, and then the last question, I saw a lot of people ask about this on Twitter, which it's interesting to me. I don't know why, uh, but... People have asked why switch over escape rope. Uh, at least from my perspective, escape rope hurts you a lot more often than it helps you. Um, but is there a specific reason, Alex, for you why to switch over like a one-one split or two escape rope? Uh, I think we actually tried rope. It was mostly just because like the times you're switching, you're usually bossing. You're usually bossing anyways. Like. It, it, it switches kind of like an end game thing or a turn two thing. So like turn two, you switch, you're hitting a Ralts or something for like 80 damage. You, you don't want them to go into Greninja or something. So rope is bad there. Right. In the end game, you're bossing anyways, almost certainly. Like you're probably like switching your buddy catch into like a Murkrow and bossing a Gardevoir or something like that. Right. Um, so like rope was just not beneficial there. It doesn't really improve anything other than just like occasionally your opponent bricks and you're already winning if they break right so like it just doesn't help you um, yeah and something specific for me at least uh i think in a, in a broad sense a lot of times you want to kill the thing that hit you on the last turn like you just want to take energy off your opponent's board so that they can't like consistently attack um but for me a big reason why you don't want rope over switch is that and hopefully we'll be able to show you in the game that's going to follow this part of the video but if you are playing against Guardi, Guardi's best line into you is to boss Gallade or Curlia and then use Cresselia to knock out the energy on your bench. That's their best line of play. And if you have escape rope, you're not killing the Cresselia. So you're not forcing your opponent to find like super odd plus another way to do that. If you rope, you kill something else and then they just boss again and do it again. And especially we saw, I know Cal only played two boss in Palpad, but like Rowan was playing raw three boss. So if you're not killing that Cresselia, it's kind of a massive deal for you, uh, for them to be able to just continuously loop those things. Some of the early lists were running heavy Serena and no boss. That's terrible. Interesting. Um, I know, like, so, yeah, Grant actually posted a list on the TSS Patreon. Go check that out. Um, but it played no boss in three Serena. Um, and this is why I think a lot of people wrote off United Wings, because not playing boss makes your deck have no win condition into Gardevoir. Yeah, what? Um, <laughs> you can't boss the Guard EX. Yeah, so a lot of early lists did this, though, so, like, I have to mention it. Like, yeah. 
low ball if you, you have no win condition. <laughs> yeah, don't do that, friends. I think our group has like made a lot of really solid decks this season specifically, and it's very rare for me to be like, yeah, I think this is a perfect 60, but I think this, this is, a, is perfect a perfect 60. 60. <laughs> no, this is perfect. Don't change it. Yeah, like like even our EUIC list, I think there was nah, probably... Nah, needed help. Yeah. <laughs> that list needed so much help. <laughs> I think our EUIC list was pretty solid, but like like there were definitely pieces where it was like, oh yeah, 1-1 one, one Vulpix doesn't actually do that much into Guardi and like... I mean, it beats it when they don't know what they're doing. Right. And so I, I think this is a perfect 60. So if you are wanting to play birds, if you think that that's fun or funny or whatever... Use this 60. The one change I think is like you could like reasonably make. I don't think it improves the deck, but if you're like looking for something to change, um, second squawk isn't necessary. You could cut it. We had it as second yeah. last ball until the night before. Um, so this format, I actually disagree because everything remaining is best of one. So you can't afford to lose a game surprising your one squawk. So you need to be playing the second squawk. There's so many challenges and cups between now and worlds that you need to be like. It's all best of one, presumably. Sometimes best of three, sure. But if you prize squawk ability and you ball for it and you just don't have it, you lose. So sure. playing the second copy is like pretty much necessary in best of one. Sure. Uh, in best of one, I can get behind that. I would also say in best of one, there's an argument to drop second squawk for the Roxanne because it turns Lost Box from a 98 to... To a 90? No, there's no it's, benefit. It's not 90. I think, I think no, Roxanne... No, it's terrible. If you... Kill the Sableye, Roxanne, and they can't find a second Sableye. Like, I, I am going to ask you about this because this is something that's interesting to me. I did not play a single game of this deck into Lost Box until the tournament. But every single game I played against Lost Box, it wasn't close in the sense that, like, like I was never winning the game. But every single game, I was, like, one prize away from winning the game. If you can stop them from sableye for a single turn... I think the matchup like drastically improves and Roxanne is a way to do that. So like in theory, yes. But what happens when they just go two stabilize, Mirage Gate attach, you just it doesn't matter. Uh, Your yeah. life's over. Like that's You're what correct. happened in our one game. We tested one game for the stack in this matchup. Interesting. Like that, that's what happened, and we just stopped because it was an auto loss. We didn't <laughs> yeah, care. it's terrible. I would say I think that the that the one rock sand based on the two, I hit lost box twice, um, and I, I did have some positions where they did set up double sableye. But sometimes if you collapsed early enough, they just never have enough bench space to play double sableye down. Like unless they benched a sableye turn one, if you collapse turn one or turn two, they can never. Oh, put Double vacuum, multiple stadiums, like yeah. What is Bro, this I, like? Listen, I don't, I don't know, but Lost Box players outplay themselves, and if you can turn it into like an That's eighty true. twenty, if you can turn it into like an eighty twenty in a best of one format, that listen, this does not have the Shemansky approval. If you're watching this video, you <laughs> don't have to play the Roxanne, but I, from fearing it out with the other people in our testing group as well, like uh, I talked about with Burge and with Kreckler. Uh, if you want to play the one Roxanne, if you're like really, really lost box averse and you you want if the you're, if you're really averse to losing the lost box, don't play this deck. Yeah, don't play the deck. And I, I think granted, uh I don't agree with Alex as well on no one's playing this to worlds. I oh, think I mean you could, but yeah. day day one worlds might be Day one it's a good play. Yeah, day one worlds might be the best time ever to play this deck. Because I think uh, most of the people playing lie. in day, <laughs> I think most of the people playing in day one worlds one know that Lost Box is a very risky play uh, because of tying. <laughs> but two, you yourself will never tie. I went to time once, and it's because no, my opponent was so slow. That's the only time, and I won on turn one of time. Even then, like. You never tie with this deck. So I think I don't agree with Alex that it's a bad play for Worlds. For day two of Worlds, you absolutely should not. But uh, in day one, when people are going to be like more tie averse, and I would also say that decks like Mew and Lugia will have a much higher play rate in day one than they will in day two. Um, yeah, those are uh, my thoughts on the deck. Alex, anything else? I think that's it.
Okay, busted. So we're gonna hop into a game real quick and we'll see you after. Uh, this is game two. Um, this is game two. Alex did win the first one. Uh, I think I had almost no chance. Um, I would have needed him to have a, oh my God, uh, have a very bad uh, a couple of turns. Wow, this is. I, I like don't even really know what is correct here. My hand is so atrocious. I mean, then you is probably correct because you're need... only obviously at VIP. Right. Uh, my hand is. Uh, oh, busted. My hand is Luminion, Guardi, Guardi. Ultra Ball Super Rod. That's impressively bad. I mean, for next turn, it's kind of chill, because, like, I mean, you have to bench the fish, but you play Claps, at least. Right. It's definitely just double Ralts here. Uh, so yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. but I think double Ralts is objectively correct. And then we will have. Yeah, wow, what a terrible hand. I mean, this is cool. The, the one nice thing about terrible hands on TCG Live is that most of my cards are shiny. Uh, so at least they're fun to look at. I just want to not prize a Flamigo once. Alex did, in fact, prize a double Flamigo last game. Um, this is just a recurring theme of my life. Prizing double Flamigo? Uh, okay, let's see. Alex What's having that? kind of an insane turn one. No, my, my, my turn one is, like, the best it possibly could have been. Not even getting the squawk? Oh, you have it? I just had the squad. Oh my gosh. See, United Wings is so broken, dude. Holy. All right, well, it's fine. Yeah, so now I am in a position where if I don't knock out this Mercru Mercro Mercro. this turn, I, I like basically already lose. Um... Because Alex can just get the second energy onto a different attacker, and then I can't do anything. So I have to try and take a knockout on Murkrow this turn, um, which feels oh look a heavy ball super unlikely. Oh, that's pretty good. Did you draw a rare candy? I did. No, I, I mean no, I didn't draw rare candy. Sorry. Uh, ignore me. Oh, you drew a supporter? That's fair. I drew Iono, yeah. You have to do it, you know, right? Do what? Oh, Six. yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. You're right. <laughs> How many cards in your hand? Six. I don't know about that. Wait, you... Oh, uh, yeah, you're going down to five. You are going down to five. It is different. <laughs> it's a different number. Okay, okay. <laughs> we're chilling. We're chilling. Okay. Um. Uh, I got to do it the league challenge yesterday. It was so good. That's so funny. Um, okay, so I need to find candy. That's all I need to find, though. So maybe... Actually, I, bro, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, this is what I get for... Um... Okay, so I'm not going to let you play Gardevoir for Worlds. Got it. I mean, if I play games with Guardi, it's probably fine. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, all right. Let's evolve there. We're going to go like this. Get some more cards. Wow. Ow. Once again, uh, not very good. Mm. Skill issue. You're you're absolutely right. This is 100% a skill issue. Let's draw some cards. I guess that I can fish go. keeps going away. You really don't like him. No, I don't want this fish. Fish is uh, fish is cringe. Are you telling me you don't want to put a fish in play? Incredible. Okay, this might be objectively wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway because I think that it's right. I mean, you're just going into Greninja, right? Yeah. Have you heard of Teleportation Burst? Oh, you're evolving. Okay. Yeah, I'm, ev fine. I'm evolving. So this was the right play? Yeah. Oh, sick. Okay. There's three birds in my desk card. Of course, it's the right play. Yeah. Okay. Oh, busted. Uh... 
Yeah, that's fine. All right, go ahead. What are you going to do about that, Alex? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, I guess I can kill it. It's not great. No, it's actually pretty bad. Yeah. And I didn't put my collapse down this turn, so your squat can go away, which really sucks for me. Um, uh, so it's like this. No, because I need... Oh. I have the kill. It's just like, I don't know if it's correct to do it. Because you... it's with a watch run, I have to retreat. Ooh. Right? Yikes. Can you... Is there any way for you to boss a Curlia? I don't even have a supporter. Oh, well, that's not great. Like, um, I could level ball for Curlia and play the game like semi normally. I think I you just, get Curlia. Oh, I think you get Curlia. You're already a prize ahead. I think you just play the game standard. Um, this is not a deck where you need to chase knockouts because if you do that, you're just like setting yourself up. Like I still, honestly, I think you might still bench the. No, you don't bench the watch roll, but you attach to the flamigo, and you're kind of fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is this hand is fine. The game itself is just really like awkward, not amazing. Yeah, yeah. The one other sort of awkward thing about uh, having your second energy on board be a DT is that I can go temple, and if you don't have collapse, it like puts you in sort of an awkward position um, because you either need to find the switch. Uh, for your guardy or your curly or whatever. Interesting. Have a have a bad bird. Thanks. Um, I mean, I have to play this, which is a little awkward, but I think it's like kind of fine as well. Is there anything? Yeah. Okay. We definitely get you back. I did it again. I evolved without you... trading again. Yeah, yeah. Don't let me play this deck. Yeah, I don't think I will. Um. Anyways, we're just gonna continue to play the game. Uh, I think spin turn was wrong. No, it's fine. You put damage on my board. Yeah, I was that or attack. I think ten damage doesn't matter. Yeah, fair enough. Like one damage counter doesn't matter, and if you don't attack with like uh, Cresselia this turn, it's like. A lot less good. Right. Like, it doesn't matter. Dude, like, 80 damage doesn't matter. Might as well not bother. Right. Yeah, I think I can grab one of these. I can continue to trade a little bit. Um... Yeah, we'll do that. I hate Guard War so much. It's just so mind-numbingly boring. I know, dude. This is why this deck has been tier one for two formats, and I've played a total of three games because I cannot convince myself to spend time playing this deck. It it blows. <laughs> this deck is so boring. It's less bad in real life, but like this hurts. Uh, yeah, that's enough. Um, normally I would say this is wrong, but in this position, I think I kill Curlia, right? Yeah, yeah, you always kill Curlia. Typically, I like chasing energy here because it makes it so you have to find Stadium Bump or another energy, but like, you have yeah, five cards in hand. Up. Yeah, you have five cards in hand and no Curlia on the board now, so... Yeah, this is this is sort of like your game plan into the deck. The the weird thing is is like if Alex kills my Cresselia, which he already has that knockout, um, he just retreats and kills with uh, Murkrow. Um, I only have one rod left in my deck, which is a little aw awkward. Ako taco. What did you just say? Don't ask. It was it was not great. My uh, yeah, that's that's it. The uh, the late night yesterday. <laughs> The late night invitational yesterday uh, messed up my sleep schedule. Ah, uh, yeah, because we woke up early. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So Alex is. How do I want to do this? You should play Iono. 
No. Really? I appreciate the suggestion, though. But what if I drew a good card off by prizes? <laughs> True. Good point. Now that you mention it, let me play this Iono real quick. That uh, I don't think that's what Iono looks like. <laughs> Oops, I made a mistake. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think I want to trade anything else in this hand. One, that's 120, 150. And this, viewers, is why this deck sucks. 180. What? Which deck? United Wings? Yes. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just get games like this, right? Where, like, there's really nothing you can do. <laughs> Which blows. All right. Ooh. All right, you're, you're doing... I hit double energy. <laughs> I mean, that's actually really good. I just attach both to the Curlier, right? Yeah. Cool. Boop. Oh, hello. Knockouts. Easy. Okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, you're silly kind of fine, right? How far I are have, you... like, a semi-real win condition. It's just not amazing. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so this game is not showing, like, a fantastic iteration of this matchup. It kind of shows how good Guardi is, I guess. Um, right. Because you can just sort of win even though stuff it sucks. But basically, you want to attack with Zacian early because they have to two-shot it, so you trade, like, two for two, and then you go Cresselia, and then you just try and swing with one prizers. The only reason I am in this game is because Alex didn't collapse uh, his... What's it called? And I whiffed a KO, and I, like, am dead drawing. Right. Yeah. There are, there are a multitude of reasons uh, why... Okay, so I really, what I should have done was uh, prize check. Probably. Uh-oh. Um, well, your deck is so thin. What? You have one card in deck. I know. How'd this happen? All right, good for you. Um, we are going to stop that win condition. Um, no. Wait, what? S sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What did what did you rod? I rotted uh Cresselia. No way, dude. What? I rotted uh Cresselia, uh Baby Guardy, and an Energy, so that you can't boss Greninja. Ah, uh, you don't have Energy. Wait, what? Did I you whiff the Guardy? I did. I did. I had. I. Uh, the I mean, Guardians... you have trades. You have two refinements. Yeah, but I think attacking with Cresselia here is better anyway. Probably. What are you killing? Just with Ralts? Or... Yeah, I'm going to kill Ralts. Because at this point, I just need you to not boss. Actually, maybe I kill the Murkrow on the bench. I mean, that's probably correct. Yeah, I think I kill Murkrow on bench. Um, we go boop. Yeah, killing Murkrow on bench feels better because if you can't establish another energy this turn, I killed that Murkrow, and then you need to find Stadium Bump. Um, energy on Curly is useless. I can take my last prize with Guardi. And then we just do this. Bye-bye. I guess I could have given you the opportunity to misplay by killing the active one, but... I respect you too much as a player to do that. Uh, I do that. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, I, I owned you into research. Well, I haven't seen a supporter the entire game. I hope you would I me into something like that. Why did you not play collapse there? Uh, there's reasons. Namely, echoing horn is a win condition. Oh yeah, that's true. Because you didn't put your fish back, so, like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. So I just have to play my own collapse. Play around the echoing horn. That's what we're saying. Well, um, my hand is two psychic energy and a penny, so I don't know how well that's going to go for me. Right. I do know what I'm top decking, though. <laughs> True. Uh, um...
Okay. Um, so. I... You didn't trade. <laughs> Oops. It's fine. Collapse doesn't actually matter because I don't think I have any basic Pokemon left in my deck. That sounds about right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. You have one Ralt slot. No, you don't. You have no basics. You're yeah. Just, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't have any basic Pokemon left in my deck. So yeah, it doesn't actually matter. I would much rather just keep the temple down. And we'll do yeah. this. Hmm. That makes my win condition really hard, you know. <laughs> and we'll do this. Actually, it makes it a lot easier. Hmm. Did I okay. give you everything? <laughs> I, mean, I, have, I have a lot of good cards. It just depends on what I trade into. That makes sense. All right. Well, he's got it or he doesn't. But I mean, like, if you win here, it just goes to show, like, I was ahead this game, like, the whole time. Alex was doing, like, 40 damage for three turns, and it doesn't matter. It just, it just does not matter. I don't think it quite played out that badly. For you? Oh, I have no. Oh, I lose. Darn it. Um... Hold yeah. On, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Only 10 energy. Uh, Cal played 11, right? Cal did play 11. I think Boss Greninja is still correct. I mean, yeah, obviously it's correct, but like... My last energy could be prized. You play Penny too, so it doesn't matter. That's true, I do play Penny. And I do have the reversal energy in my hand. Unreal. The bottom, like, eight cards in my deck aren't even, like, good cards, because I know what they are because of Iono. Yeah. It's tough. All right, well, GG. Anyways, I, like, I think you see sort of what Alex's game plan is meant to be. Like, the matchup can be frail when you don't set up quickly, because if you just never get to boss Guardi EX, you can still lose, like, what happened there. Um, but I did have... I had kind of an insane turn, too, that you weren't able to punish because you had to do 10 damage to my Greninja. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I mean, it's also games like this that are the reason I didn't top 8 the event. Like, right. I had the matchup run. I just couldn't do it. Like, Right. And I think same. Like, like my losses generally, I lost to two loss box, but I also lost to, well, I mean, I was never going to beat Arctina with double Sharons. That was just not going to happen. But I lost to... Not. I lost to a double brick against a Guardi, and then I lost to another Arctina um, just off of, like, crappy prizes. And, like, the deck turbos turn one. Only turn one. But if you turbo through resources that you need, you can lose. And that's just sort of what happens. Uh, but, yeah. Thank you, Alex, for coming on. Thank you, everyone, for watching the video. Uh, make sure to subscribe down below. And maybe we'll see y'all again in, like, another six months. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this entire video from the Shuffle Squad. Honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate each and every person that supports our content, watches what we have going on every single day, every single week, even from time to time, and uh, continuously allows us to have a forum to project our creative content towards the Pokemon TCG community. So if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and even leave a comment to help boost the YouTube algorithm. That being said, we'll catch you with our next video. Thanks again. Take it easy.